What's up, everybody? I'm Thomas J. Beleza, and welcome to The Right Mindset. Today, we are going to go over, uh, as you can see, part six of outlining a book series of saga. This is writing a zero draft. <clears throat> uh, so often, the zero draft is referred as the discovery draft, and it serves as the bedrock of your storytelling journey. This initial draft is not about perfection or polish. No, 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 no but about pouring your raw ideas and characters and plot points onto the page, free from the constraints of detailed planning or self-editing. The Zero Draft is your story's first breath, an unfiltered stream of consciousness where your narrative begins to take shape. Now, it's in this draft that you allow yourself the freedom to explore the breadth and depth of your story's potential, laying down the skeleton of your narrative without the pressure of accuracy or coherence. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, your first draft doesn't need to be perfect, but this draft doesn't have to be perfect even less. It's just about getting the ideas down on the page. Thomas, why is that important? That's a great question. The zero draft acts as a sandbox, Ooh, a space where your ideas can mingle, clash, and, uh, you know, together, revealing connections and narrative paths you might not have envisioned in the planning stages. Now, it's about capturing the essence of your story, the raw emotion, and the unrefined plot points that will later be honed into a compelling narrative. <laughs> During this phase, you'll map out the journey, noting down the pivotal moments, character arcs, and thematic undercurrents that will drive your story forward. The goal is not to get bogged down in details, but to sketch the board. Uh, I'm sorry, to uh, sketch the broad strokes of your tale, providing a foundation upon which substantial, 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 substan subs subscan subscan whew, dyslexia, uh, which the following drafts will be built and refined. Subsequent. Subsequent. All right. All right. Anyway, what will we cover today? In today's session, we'll walk through the process of translating the ethereal ideas of your imagination to tangible bullet points on the page to set the stage for the narrative magic to unfold, seeding throughout the process, and how to focus on getting the plot out onto the page. Before we ever get started, you know, I like to give you three helpful tips that we will utilize. Uh, through the physical example that I will give you in real time. Now, the first rule or tip, the strong tip, is the power of bullet points. I love the power of bullet points. In the realm of crafting a zero draft, bullet points emerge as a writer's steadfast ally. How? Well, let me tell you. These markers serve as beacons of narrative structure, guiding the pace, establishing the rhythm, and ensuring Co ensuring a coherent flow throughout your unfolding story. The true beauty of bullet points lies in their simplicity and versatility, offering a clear, organized way to lay down the fundamental elements of your tale. I'll go over more of that in real time. Bullet points allow you to distill complex ideas and sprawling narratives into uh, manageable bite-sized pieces making it easier to visualize the progression of your plot and the development of your characters. They act as placeholders for key events, character interactions, and significant reveals, providing a skeleton framework that supports the fleshing out of your story and later drafts. Now, by employing the bullet points, you're able to swiftly, okay, swiftly insert critical information directly into the narrative without the need for elaborate exposition at this early stage. This approach not only streamlines the drafting process, but also keeps the momentum going, preventing you from getting bogged down by details that can be expanded upon later. It's about capturing the essence and moving. Uh, it's about capturing the essence and moving forward, ensuring that each bullet point propels the story towards its next pivotal moment. Moreover, bullet points facilitate a dynamic exploration of pacing. They enable you to experience 
with the, uh, or I should say, experiment with the rhythm of your story, adjusting the pace as needed by adding or condensing bullet points to ensure the narrative ebb and flows uh, naturally. This flexibility is invaluable in the zero draft phase where the focus is on laying down the bones of your story uh, or narrative, I should say, setting the stage for the fresh and uh, sinew to be added in uh, uh, following uh, revisions. Now, in essence, bullet points are a powerful tool in the early drafting process, offering clarity, flexibility, and the straightforward path through the complex landscape of your narrative. They are basically stepping stones that will lead you from the spark of an idea to a completion of a robust zero draft. All right. Uh, a couple of things before I go forward to the second uh, tip. When it talks about the ebb and flow and, and the pacing and stuff like that, you'll see that I use bullet points as a way to mark the beginning of a specific moment, a specific beat. And then I'll, I'll push the bullet points inward to... Uh, to basically measure out the movement of that particular beat. And the deeper I go into moments, the further the bullet points will go in. You'll see that very clearly as I work on it in real time. Uh, this is advantageous because then you could look at a scene and just see the furthest bullet point and be like, okay, is it going quickly? Or is the, does it have like a rhythm to it, right? Sometimes you want it to be quick, but then slow down. So it's like boom, boom, doom, doom, boom, boom, doom. Boom, 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 down, 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 boom, boom, right? And you could see that visually with the bullet points. So that should be exciting. Uh, the other thing is about inserting ideas. With bullet points, if you know what the structure of the scene is and you know the rhythm of the scene, you know, oh, I got to go to that third beat in the scene. I want this to happen before this thing. And you're not reading complex immersion so when you write a first draft, a lot of the times we're going to go right into it. We're going to write with the immersion, the sensory details. We're going to kind of go into the train, the, the thought process of characters. Whereas the zero draft is going to allow for moments like that. But mostly we're just hitting on the plot. We're just watching the scene unfold. There's some dialogue. There's movement. There's a lot of they looked, they smiled, they stood there which obviously changes because once you understand the scene and the beat in the greater uh, 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 the greater overall macro uh, uh, idea of the of the story where you're narrative, you will start seeing what needs to be there to immerse the reader. So it also gives you a chance to say, this is where I want to go a little bit deeper. I want to allow immersion to be a little bit deeper. This is where I wanted to keep it flowing. And that's the other, uh, the other ability of seeing the pacing of, of how many main bullet point dots are there, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's the value of the bullet point system, which again, you will see in real time shortly. Seed number two, or I should say strong, strong tip uh, number two, seeding. All right. We, we know what seeding is. However, the art of seeding in the zero draft is akin to planting the initial kernels from which the rich tapestry of your story will grow. This strategic placement of hints, clues, and fragments of backstory uh, or even plot reveal is pivotal in weaving depth and intrigue into your narrative fabric, ensuring that each revelation feels earned and impactful. Seeding allows you to distribute vital pieces of information throughout your narrative in a way that feels organic and engaging, avoiding the pitfalls of heavy-handed exposition or jarring info dumps. Ugh, water today instead of soda, not feeling very good. All right. <clears throat> when approaching seeding, consider breaking down complex backstories or significant plot elements into smaller more digestible pieces. This method not only enhances the readability of your zero draft, but also paves the way for a more nuanced and layered unveiling of your narrative. Okay. By scattering these pieces across various chapters and scenes, you create a breadcrumb trail that invites readers to piece together the puzzle of your narrative, for, for, forestink, for, for, fostering a sense of discovery and invest investment in the unfolding story. And remember, narrative is made of plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen. Story 
is how it unfolds, right? So, for instance, if a character possesses a uh, insane and uh, impactful past that shapes their motivations and actions, resist the urge to reveal this backstory in one fell swoop. Instead, seed elements of their history at key moments, perhaps through flashbacks, dialogue, or internal reflections, gradually painting a fuller picture of the characters experiences and how they inform the present narrative this approach not only enriches character development but also maintains narrative momentum keeping readers intrigued and engaged to learn more moreover seeding serves as the foundational tool in foreshadowing future events and twists by carefully placing hints and alluding to future developments you set the stage for satisfying payoffs that resonate with readers, making the narrative journey feel cohesive and thoughtfully crafted. It's about striking a balance between revealing just enough to keep readers engaged while holding back enough to preserve the element of surprise. In the zero draft phase, embrace the process of seeding as a creative exploration experimenting with how and where to plant these narrative seeds, okay? We talk about seeding a lot on this channel. I have videos on seeding. Seeding is highly recommended. It's a deep part of my writing process. I'm sure a lot of you actually do seed, but you just don't call it seeding. But knowing what it is and understanding how to use it will definitely enhance your story. Third and final tip, focus on plot, not story. When na navigating the terrain of the zero draft, it's essential to anchor your focus on the plot rather than getting entangled in the broader narrative fabric of the story. Distinction between story and plot is crucial at this fun foundational stage. The plot encompasses the sequence of events that drive your narrative forward. The what happens of your tale. In contrast, the story envelopes the emotional journeys, the themes, the deeper meanings, the why and how these events impart, um, impact your characters and resonate with readers. In the zero draft, your primary aim, okay, is to lay down the skeleton of your plot, mapping out the crucial events conflicts and resolutions that propel your characters from the beginning to the end of the journey. Doesn't mean you can't add dialogue and doesn't mean you can't add personality and it doesn't mean you can't add immersion. It just means your focus should be on how do we let this moment, this scene, this chapter play out. This is not the stage for interactive, uh, intricate prose, nuanced character introspection or thematic exploration. Instead, Think of the zero draft as drafting the blueprint for a building. It's about getting the structural elements in place, ensuring the foundation is solid and the framework supports the story you'll later flush out. Flush out. Focusing on the plot helps streamline your writing process at this stage, preventing you from becoming bogged down by the complexities of character development or thematic depth. It allows you to maintain clarity and momentum, ensuring that each scene, each chapter, moves the narrative forward in a meaningful way. This clarity of purpose is vital in constructing a coherent and compelling narrative skeleton upon which the flesh of your story will be built in following drafts. Moreover, a plot-centric approach in the zero draft ensures that you establish a strong narrative arc with clear stakes, goals, and obstacles for your characters. It's about charting the course of their journey, setting up the dominoes that will cascade through the narrative. By focusing on the plot, you ensure that the story has direction and purpose, providing a clear path for character development and thematic exploration to weave through in later revisions. You have to remember that the beauty of a zero draft lies in its raw potential. It's a creative playground where the plot is king and the story's heartbeat. Uh, uh, I'm going to reread that because that's a good sentence. I wrote again. <clears throat> it's a creative playground where the plot is king and the story's heart beats quietly beneath 
waiting to be explored in depth. Just saying. Uh, so yeah, we're focusing on plot, not story. It's all about setting the foundation, laying the bricks. And if you have, the thing is, once you're done with the, uh, uh all of this and you can see the story, uh, the narrative flow smoothly through plot, dressing it up is the easy part because you don't have to worry about, did I dress up anything? And does it still make sense? Because as long as you dress up the plot points, that are moving the narrative forward and you already did the work to make sure it, it makes sense it's coherent characters being consistent now you can start playing with it you can start dressing it up okay before we go any further uh, please subscribe hit the bell icon uh, so you don't miss out i'm just saying all right all right this is the walkthrough zero draft of first chapter all right okay all right okay Let's uh, share the screen. Share the screen. I will take this off, and I will just leave this on. Okay, so last the last video you saw, the last video you saw, uh, we took we took uh, the information and just copied and pasted there, and then we took each beat and we mapped it out. We said to ourselves, what needs to happen? So if there's one, two, three, four, five, six, there are six major beats, all right? Six major beats that we have to hit in this chapter. And the way I like to do it is I'm going to start with the first beat. And see, I don't need to worry about this because we mapped that out. All right. So I'm going to go up here. <laughs> Okay. Zero draft. All right. So then I, I do this. Okay. Uh, as, as, as a visual, before I get into like actually doing it, I'll be like open scene, opening scene. Right. And, then, uh, Let's see, uh, trails people heading down the street. So the, the ultimate goal is that he's going to end up uh, trailing people down the thing. So we start with Jack throwing down a cigarette. Um, opening scene with Jack throwing down a cigarette, right? So let's say that was my first plot point, B, okay? I might go, I'm going to go in because I want to expand on this moment, okay? All right. Adjust um, his hat. Mm, okay. And you could write prose. You just don't have to make them uh, super, super uh, complicated. So Jack stepped on the cigarette and adjusted his hat. His, uh, his focus uh, settled in on the front door of the club, the nightclub ahead of him. Now, I'll do this. Name club. So I, I put this in red. So again, I don't have to worry about, whoa, hey, who? I don't have to worry about details right now. I don't have to be like, oh, I have to stop. I have to pause here. I got to think of the nightclub name. In fact, when I go back later and I do come up with names, I don't necessarily have to say, uh, look at the front door of, you know, Jacob's nightclub. Like, I don't have to do that. I could still just have it say nightclub, the nightclub, right? But I need to know, I need to know the name of the club. So that's an important note that I put down. So Jack stepped on the cigarette and adjusted his hat. His focus settled in on the front door of the nightclub ahead of him. The, sh the shadows, uh, the shadows that moved around the uh, street lights, uh, lift his shoulder, exposed, and his face hidden. All right. Now, now again, this is not a pretty prose. This is not super immersive. But I'm I'm dressing up. Um, I'm dressing up the feel of the scene, the feel of the chapter, 
the voice that I kind of want to go into right now. It seems a little, it's more mysterious. It is no worry, right? We're adding a little elements there. Doesn't mean that that's what I'm going to end up having written. I'm not going to write the shadows that move. I might turn that into a beautiful pro. Uh, I might, uh, I, I like writing with lyrical style writing. So I might end up with lyrical sense there. Um, but only I'm just setting up the opening theme, the opening scene with Jack throwing down a cigarette and boom, I'm just opening it up. All right. So going back. Okay. Uh, I might, I might go a little further. So another beat within that moment might be like, um, all right. Uh, you grab for another cigarette. Uh, he grabbed for another cigarette. Oh, Empty pack, crushing it, and and tossing it aside into a close uh, uh, a trash trash bin to his right. Trash bin. He grabbed. Oh, okay. Now, see, this is actually trying to change. Okay, so this is interesting. Let me just. I'm going to show you something. Uh, something fun. So this is grammar. This is saying that the proper grammar would be he grabbed another cigarette uh, from his empty pack, crushing it. Right. But this is more voice choice, and this is this is why you had you hire uh, editors like line editors. Because what they're doing is they're trying to maintain your, your voice. So this might be my voice. He grabbed for another cigarette. Now, obviously, he grabbed another cigarette is fine, too. But taking away he grabbed for another cigarette now eliminates the reality of it, which is that it, there are no cigarettes. His intention was to get another cigarette. So he grabbed for another cigarette, uh, you know. But it's saying it doesn't work. So uh, he reached. Let's see if that, that makes it better. He reached for another cigarette. Yes, okay. He reached for an empty uh, bag. Okay. So you can still say grab, but grab would indicate that he's actually touching something. You know? So that's why reach would be a better grammatic word. But tonal wise you know you might be like well i want i want i want that he's grabbing for it like his hand is actually you know moving around and his fingers are 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 trying to find the cigarette but there it turns out it's an empty pack right um uh, but i could work on that later like i don't have to again you don't want to spend too much time on the zero draft going like you know what are the logistics of it I'm just setting the tone for that moment, okay? So think of it that way, all right? So uh, crushes in his hands on his side. All right. Now, uh, as an example, maybe uh, I go, I, I go, uh, you know, uh, uh, I could write, he, he thinks, oh, uh, check. What's going on? Check about. Getting more cigarettes, but also ponders the idea of quitting. It's the only thing, the only thing. All right, and the reason I do that is because I'm saying that the cig grabbing for the cigarettes ignites this beat so that's why i go deeper in but this is all this is all one beat now i'm going to go to the next beat right so i know i did this so three people leave the nightclub all right now a couple of things here i could actually do this okay i could do this and now I know these are the made the major beats. I know that I have the major beats, right? 
So three people leave three times. So that major beat isn't necessarily me saying what happens in the scene right away. It's me indicating that this is the scene I'm going to be operating on. This is the scene that I'm going to be working on. And, uh, you know, okay. So let's do it. Three people leave the nightclub. Oh. All right. Uh, front door opens. The loud release of uh, entertainment inside. Right. Loud release of music from inside. Loud release of jazz music from inside. Right, because uh, what's the chapter called? 1946. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, what what style of music was popular in 19? Swing. Oh, jazz and blues. All right, so I was right. Okay. So the, the front door opens with a loud release of jazz music from inside. Da, da, da. Uh, Jack looks up. Now see, again, he looks up, smiles, sits there, stands there, stood there. Like this isn't what I would write in a first draft, Jack looks up. But I want, I want to acknowledge to myself that it got his attention, right? So Jack looks up to see. Like C is a filter word. Like you wouldn't necessarily use C unless it was describing – a very specific process of action like you know if jack watched watched him uh place the cell phone in his pocket not that there's a cell phone but places so like that's important that means that he noticed that right anyway jack looks up to see three men exit uh exit the club uh heading to the left. Oh, okay. Not that it's important to right, left, or right, but it just adds a little extra sum sum. Okay. Now, okay, it comes a little bit later. It's, uh, okay. So he's got to follow them. Okay. Uh, Jack looks up to see three men exiting the club, heading to the left. Okay. Describe the men. Again, it's a zero draft. So this is the beauty of it. Describe the men uh, and make sure Jack uh, takes notes, note who they are. I. Observing them. Okay, so that'll be a. This is a character moment, all right. But as you can see, this is the beat, and then I want to explore the beat a little bit more. Uh. Okay, all right. So I know that that's coming. That's coming anyway. So let's go back down and see what the second beat is. Uh. Oh. Okay. Do, 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 do. All, right, All right. The second beat is going to be a hard chapter break. He files into a diner and watches me. All right. So we know we're going to get there, but let's do this. Uh, the front door opens with a loud release of jazz music from inside. Jack looks up to see them. Uh, three men exit the club, heading to the left. Uh, describe the men and make sure Jack and there. Okay. So I think the important thing is. Uh, we could actually do this. Uh, Jack follows the men. Uh, okay. Waiting a good breath of time. Jack follows the men. Okay. And while following them, he has this moment. Okay. Maybe there's something I want to acknowledge about the men. Let's see. What else? What do we have? What do we have? Uh, let's go down to uh, from there. Two of the men get into the club and they get into the camp. Jack follows that person to the park. He's thinking about where this guy is going. Maybe Jack mentioned that he hates the park. He 
Let's see. Let's look. Three more men appear. One is dressed in a nice suit, the other two seem seasoned. They talk a bit. The one guy is confident, while the other three are less so. Maybe they are nervous. At least one of them looks nervous. Okay, all right, okay. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Sorry for the movement, but we're about we're about to make sense of it, okay? So uh, Jack steps on the cigarette. He does all this, okay? They come out. All right. Something that I have to describe is uh, one of the men uh, carries. By the way, I might write in a, a past tense or present tense during my zero draft. It doesn't really matter right now because I'm not. Uh, I'm not finalizing, and I'm just I'm just getting thoughts out. You know, zero draft is part of me. So one of the men carries a thin case side. He walks with uh, tall shoulders uh, and a confidence that doesn't fit the casual uh, behavior of the other two men. Okay, okay. Fix that. One of the oh, one of the men carries. Boom. All right. So there we go. That's the first beat. Do we got everything? Jack talks about the club and his personal opinion on who he's following without giving away. Okay. So let's see. Let's go over here. Uh, let's add another beat. Hmm. Jack talks about the club and his personal opinions on who he's following. Actually, what we could do is that's what this is. This is Jack doing that, right? So Jack describes him in. So I would actually do that. I don't understand what's going on. The reason I made that go in is because this is at, so he describes uh, the men and makes sure Jack takes note of who he's observing. So how does he do it? This is how he does it. So that's why I moved the beat in. It's it's basically the way I do it is the first beat is what is the scene going to be or the moment. <clears throat> the second plot point is the first actual physical thing that happens. Uh, if I want to go deeper into this, the front door opens with a loud, okay, I could go describe, uh, the style, uh, of jazz music, uh, uh, right. I could uh, describe the style of jazz music, uh, the two men standing, oh, actually, the two doormen, doormen standing outside. Uh, one of the doormen are en entertaining a woman, uh, a small group of women trying to get in. Uh, oh, ooh, or uh, describing. Okay. I need to describe. Okay. One of the doormen. Entertaining. Okay. One of the doormen. Yeah, so I need to describe the style of jazz music, the two doormen standing outside, uh, one of the doormen entering a small group, uh, uh, entertaining a small group of women trying to get in, okay? So that's why I would do that. And then I know the next one is after waiting for a good breath of time, Jack follows the men. So I describe the men and make sure Jack takes note of who they are. And how does he do that? Well, he recognizes that one of the men carries a thin case to his side. He walks with tall shoulders. and confidence that doesn't fit the casual behavior of the other two men there you go pretty quick pretty easy right it's a zero draft now i can add dialogue if i want and i might i might do that in a second so i did all these so now i can, well now i can get rid of that but all right so then down here i map out with the, some color coding that that is taken care of so then we're going to take this one it says a hard chapter break i love hard chapter breaks Okay, does that mess this up? Yeah, it does. Oh, no, it doesn't. All right, sorry about the movie. Okay, so it's a hard chat to break. So what I'm going to do is this. Boop. 
I like to use the little, the little ones, the little stones. All right, and now I'm gonna start my next one. Okay. Do, 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 do. Right, because it should be. I should be doing two double space. Yeah, double space. Okay. So I know. Whoop. Whoopsie. <laughs> okay. He follows them to a diner and watches them eat. Now here's a couple of things I could do. Right. First, obviously, Jack watches them through a diner window, mentions how long they've been in the diner or so, or show how long they've been in the diner. People in the place uh, have Jack talk about how crappy this case is. Okay, so the first beat I might do is, I think I'm gonna take away the follows because we know he's following them from the first, the scene before it. So let's just say, all right. All right, uh, the diner sign uh, blasts across the nights, the night shining down on the cars uh, along the parking lot. It's parking lot. Now that's nice because uh, I just gave the uh, diner, uh, uh, I gave it existence, right? Because it's as in the diner. All right. The diner sign blasts across the night, shining down on the cars along its parking lot. All right. Uh, yeah. Jack is relaxed on a bench across, uh, across uh, the street. Uh, yeah. It closed. Down the uh, car, car shop, mechanic shop, mechanic shop, mechanic shop. Oh, yeah, of course. Now he's about right. All right, now I'm going to try. Yeah, close, uh, closed, uh, closed, closed mechanic shop. Right. So we could do a. Uh, he buys a cigarette. Oh my god! Uh, from uh, the machine at uh, machine outside the shop. Okay, it's not uncommon. Back in the forties, he buys cigarettes from the machine outside the shop. Mm, okay, I could also add some. Let's see. Uh, uh, Jack checks his uh, wristwatch. Eh. It's cracked. Cracked. Wristwatch. Noting. It's almost midnight. All right. Okay. The dia. Twenty-four hour diner sign. Actually, I should just say the diner. Uh, the diner sign. Okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's, it's a diner. All right. So uh, noting that it's uh, almost midnight. So we set we set the clock. All right. Jack watches them through there smoking another cigarette. So see, I had to get him to buy more cigarettes. So now it's going to be another beat. He lights up the cigarette. Uh, cigarette, um, and proceeds to watch the men, uh, at the table. Their food arrives. So that allows us to know that Jack's been here for a little bit now. It hasn't, it was, he didn't just arrive. They didn't just arrive by having him get a cigarettes and then turning around. That is a, by so in writing, uh, I want you know how like you have a uh, sight, you know, you have taste, you have touch. You have, right? So time is also a sense. So I just created a sense of time. He looked at his watch and he's like, it's midnight. Yeah, that's a sense of time. But I showed movement of time 
because he lights up the cigarette and proceeds to watch the men at the table. Their food arrives. That's indicating that he's been here already for some time, forever, how long it would take to sit down, order, and get your food. Nice. Uh, Jack makes... Jack makes note that one of the men, uh, note that the man who had been carrying the case ordered breakfast. Fast food, breakfast food. Well, the others both ordered hamburgers. Okay, it's just a little, a little something, something. I'm oh, sorry, I took it off the screen. So I wrote that uh, he lights up a cigarette, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Jack makes, oh, okay. So Jack proceeds to watch them, uh, the men at the table. I kind of feel like, what is going on? I feel like that would make sense. Uh, their food arrives. Jack makes note that the men, uh, the man who had uh, been carrying them ordered. Okay, sounds good. All right, let's see what else. Jack watches them from this, so we have that. Boop. And just how long they've been there, or show. Okay, so I kind of did that. All right, so I'm actually going to do this. This is another way. Have Jack talk about how crappy this case is. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put this here like this. I can do this and move on with the zero draft going. All right, I know he's going to be talking uh, about this moment, but maybe I want to add something. So have Jack talk about how crappy this case is. Uh, can do these cases. Yeah, half asleep. All right. In fact, should have gotten a full night sleep last. Uh, no, can't sleep with these headaches. There we go. Can't sleep with these headaches. Uh, he can do. Oh. He can handle these cases while half asleep. In fact, I should have gotten a full night's sleep, but no, I can't sleep with these damn, these damn it headaches, these damn headaches. Uh, fun fact: I was uh, I got in school suspension once uh, while going to school in Florida. I was in eleventh uh, grade, whatever. And uh, I was talking to somebody in our class, and I said, uh, uh, not that I believe this statement, but I was, I was just making a joke. But I was like, uh, <clears throat> in the moment, I said, yeah, you know, I believe God created beavers to dam the rivers, you know, because that's how God damned the rivers. And then uh, uh, the teacher heard me, and she told me to go down to the principal's office. And I ended up getting in school suspension because uh, they believe I said, God damn it. And uh, you can you know, blast me there. Uh, this, this is back in the uh, 90s. Anyway, so I get the in-school suspension, and they uh, give me a sheet of paper, right? And uh, just a really quick aside, they give me a sheet of paper, and the first thing says, what's your name, Thomas? And it says, why are you here? And I says, oh, because, you know, I was telling this kid uh, 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 that I believe God created beavers to dam the river because that's how he, dam you know, God dams the river. I, they gave me another day of in-school suspension. Because I had written, because I finished, I go, uh, they, I got in school suspension because they believed I said, God damn it. When in reality, I was just saying, God damn the river. So they gave me the sheet of paper again. And I go, I refuse to incriminate myself a, a, uh, a second time. I'm not going to write down why I got in school suspension. So they gave me, they, they gave me in school suspension again. And then I was just like, all right, I got to get out of this. <laughs> it's crazy. Moving on. Okay, what's the next beat? Uh, okay. 
mention how long they've been there or show some time. So I'm actually, uh, I'm going to do, one second, I got to look at something. I'm actually going to do a soft chapter break here. Okay. One, two. Boom. All right. And the reason I'm doing that is because time is going to be passing. Or actually, let me see. You know what? Look at that. I can still do the soft chapter break, but I realized, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fill this up like this. This is what this is the greatest part about writing. Um, this I actually kind of did. I mentioned how long they were there. It's it's almost midnight. So that beat was put in there, um, but I don't need to really go. Oops, I don't need to go deeper into that. What I do need to do though, let's go up here, and it is a soft chapter break. Eh, eh. But we're gonna just jump right to the next the next beat itself okay so now we know we're on this next beat okay good it's been a while I'll show the diner empty okay well it's also uh it's probably after midnight now so um Man paid the bill at the counter. Um, oh, wait. From there, two of the people get into a cab. And, okay, all right. All right. <clears throat> all right. Jack uh, put out his cigarette. Cigarette. I'm never going to be able to spill a cigarette. Let's just put that out there. All right. Uh, Jack put out his cigarette and prepared as he uh, sore. Again, sore is a filter word. Just for now, I'm putting it there. Uh, he saw movement uh, from two of the men. They uh, all shook hands. Uh, the other man uh, stayed seated. Okay, uh, Jack puts out, okay, puts out, okay. I might do this. Boop. I don't know why it's doing that. They all shook hands. The other man stayed seated. I would go, uh, they headed out uh, as a cab arrived for them. Okay. All right. So that's indicating that maybe they called a cab while they were in the diner. Okay. Okay. Um, down. Okay, uh, Jack uh, stepped away from uh, the street light and uh, positioned himself uh, better to follow if the man gets into the car. Uh, so he can see a license plate or what cab the man got into if he does. All right, so I'm probably going uh, cab, cab, did I spell that wrong? Cab, cab, I spell that wrong. Just a taxi. Taxi. All right, the man. Uh, okay, so Jack C, uh, stepped away from the streetlight and positioned himself better to follow. Uh, uh, better. Just in case he has to follow the man uh, if he gets into a car. Uh, if he if he got into a car, uh, a car, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do one of these. He's thinking about about the process, about this process in real time, okay. Um, 
CNO, I'm writing with the microphone directly in front of me. So it makes typing on this keyboard a little hard sometimes. Okay. Uh, all right. So Jack stepped away from the street and positioned himself better just in case he had to follow the man if he got into a car. Um, okay. So that's the uh, man. Okay. Now we get the man paid the bill in the diner after finishing his cup of coffee i think that's that, that says itself right that's a movement but I, I could go into it i could say you know um uh, this guy just woke up starting the day all right he just woke up just woke all right obviously it's telling me to put woke but what if this is how i want the guy to talk right so dialogue is weird when it comes to you know anyway uh oh here we go jack said <laughs> that's just so i know now this might not be the line i use but maybe this is what he's thinking like he's like oh that's interesting you know this guy's acting like he just he, he's like spry you know they were at a nightclub but he doesn't seem tired he seems like awake so you know that's that's an interesting thing to pay attention to because he's a detective right so he's he's taking note of these things uh okay all right now we got to do the next moment which is the man uh okay uh, he watches the man step out of the diner look both ways and heads Way does he head? Does he head anywhere? Heads up. Uh, he heads to the right. Oh, yeah. No, no, let's do left. Because we wanted to keep going left. Keep going left. Damn it. Oh, I'm going to get in school suspension. All right. So, what I just did is uh, let's, let's kill this one. Let's go back down here. All right. Whoop. I just did three beats. I think in 20 minutes. All right. So one, two, three. Yeah, I did three beats in 20 minutes. And there it is. Let's look at it real quick. All right. Because what we have to do next is, uh, as the screen says, are all plot points there? Okay. And how do we know? Well, if I scroll back down, right, without looking, without reading the thing yet. Oh, if it has the highlight. I know that I did it. Okay. Obviously, I could read through it, right? We could be one of those people, right? Which I don't mind doing. So let's do it. Opening scene with Jack throwing down a cigarette. Jack stepped on the cigarette and adjusted his hat. His focus settled in on the front door of the nightclub, named Nightclub Leader. Okay. Ahead of him, the shadows that moved around the street lights left his shoulder exposed and his face hidden. He reached for another cigarette from his empty pack, crushing it in his hand and tossing it aside into a trash bin to his right. Oh, look what I just did, a character moment. He could have just threw it on the floor, but he threw it in the trash bin. <laughs> Jack thinks about getting more cigarettes, but also ponders the idea of quitting, but it's the only thing that helps him focus. Oh, no, okay. All right. Uh, that's pretty good to me. Okay, three people leave the nightclub. What does that look like? Well, the front door opens with a loud release of jazz music from inside. Jack. So, you know, I, I could read through this and make sure it's good. Let's talk about the last thing. Which is does it feel does it feel like a chapter? Right now, no, because obviously I didn't I didn't finish all six beats, but I did the first the first tree, right? So what I would look at at this point, if I did the first three and there's six, does this feel like the midpoint conflict? Huh? Huh? Like the midpoint, right? And it does, and I'll tell you why. This is the opening scene, okay? We're establishing everything, okay, of the chapter and what it's about. We know that he's waiting for somebody, okay. And then here's the inciting incident, okay, of the of the of the chapter, not the story or the narrative of the chapter. Three people leave the nightclub, and this gets his attention, and he follows them, which takes us to they're in a diner. So now we're in the new world. This is the new world of the chapter, okay also known as act two, right? And he's sitting there and he's watching him eat dinner, food at the diner. And he's just like, all right, he finally got his other cigarettes. That's great. Okay. 
now we're at the midpoint. The midpoint, everything changes, right? The the, uh, uh, the two people leave, and the one guy there says, all right, it has escalated now because now he has to follow this guy who's now alone. He's got to follow him to wherever he's going to another location. Uh, you know, so if we look at the... Uh, the actual plot points down here he's at so he's looking for a solution right so he's, he just left the midpoint and now this is the end of the second act where it's like you know jack follows that person to the park uh I have jack thinking about where this guy's going so he's trying to find a solution ultimately right that's what it is it's about finding solutions to the midpoint conflict like where is this guy going like what's going on uh and we and we're also setting up tension he doesn't like the park and all this other stuff and then we present the third act. We start the third act with men, and they they show up with a briefcase, and one of the men is dressed in a nice suit, while the other two men seem seasoned. We're setting all that up, and then we finally resolve. He is almost caught, but the man ends up leaving. One of the men hears the click of the camera, and they go over the investigation, but they are searching for the wrong idea. The man, the men all head off. All right, so real quick before we uh, before I go to the next moment of the video, camera. Boop, 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 boop. So I got to go back and see the camera. Seed the camera. Uh, Dixon, uh, uh, shadows uh, hanging from a camera hung from a strap, uh, hung to his side. Uh, from a shoulder strap. Okay, now we have the camera. Anyway, all right, so there you go. That's me showing you an example in real time of a zero draft. Uh, let's get through the video. We're almost done. We're almost done, my friends. Practice outside of writing. So a truly ma uh, to truly master the art of zero drafting, it's essential to cultivate and exercise your drafting skills beyond the confines of your primary novel writing sessions meaning you don't always have to write when you uh, you don't always have to practice when you write you could work on things to better enhance those skills so when you do work on your actual projects you have those skills available uh integrating zero drafting practices into your daily life can sharpen your narrative instincts and enhance your storytelling agility here are ways to weave zero drafting exercises into various aspects of your daily routine. So one is micro story challenges. Challenge yourself to create micro stories or vignettes in a zero draft format on a regular basis. Pick a random prompt and uh, from daily observations, news headlines, or even overheard conversations and draft a short narrative around it using uh, the bullet points. Uh, the constraints of brevity uh, encourages concise, plot-driven storytelling, mirroring the zero-draft process. Number two, character sketches in real time. As you encounter or observe different people throughout your day, mentally draft a zero-draft sketch of their character. Imagine their background, motivations, or a pivotal moment in their life. This exercise sharpens your ability to quickly conceptualize and integrate characters into your narratives. And three, narrative uh, deconstructions of media. I love doing this. I do this all the time. Uh, while engaging with any form of storytelling, media, book, movies, podcasts, etc., practice deconstructing. And when I say podcast, is like story podcasts where they, they like do like acting. And it's almost it's almost like the old school days, you know. The shadow, only the shadow knows the evil that lies in man, right? Um, so you want to practice uh, deconstructing the narrative in the zero draft manner. Identify the core plot points and character arcs and jot them down in bullet points. This not only enhances your analytical skills, but also reinforces the, uh, the habit of identifying essential narrative elements, narrative elements in raw format. I'm just saying. Final thoughts, and then you can get out of here. As we wrap up today's exploration in the zero draft world, the very foundation of your storytelling journey, it's crucial to recognize this phase for what it truly is, a beginning. The zero draft is not just the first draft of your story, it's the birthplace of your narrative where ideas take their first breaths 
and the potential of your saga begins to unfold. This initial unfiltered draft is where you allow your creativity to flow unchecked, where the raw essence of your story emerges without the constraints of perfection or polish. It's a reminder that the art of storytelling is a process, one that begins with the courage to lay down the your ideas, however, however rough or unrefined it is, it's all about getting the ideas down. So embrace the zero draft. Uh, it's all about the possibilities. So by embracing it, you're embracing the possibilities. It's about giving yourself the freedom to explore, to make mistakes, and to discover the heart of your narrative. This draft is your narrative playground, a space where plot points, character arcs, and thematic elements can mingle and morph, revealing the true depth and breadth of your story. Now, you saw in real time some plot points we ha I had written in the last video. I ended up moving around or adjusting. Uh, I forgot that the camera was in the in, in the chapter, so when I did a quick, I followed the rule, you know, was uh, are all the plot points there? When I looked at the six plot points, I realized, oh, I got to see the camera into an earlier moment. So you don't always have to be perfect. You can you can adjust and move it as you go forward. Um, I would like to say that as as you do move forward, though, from this stage, carry with you the understanding that every great saga began as a mere whisper of an idea, a series of bullet points on a page, a collection of unrefined moments waiting to be shaped and honed. The Zero Draft is your story's first step toward becoming the epic tale it's meant to be, a foundational piece that will support the intricate layers of narrative you'll build in, in further future and other drafts. So, dear storyteller, that's you. As we conclude this lesson, remember that the Zero Draft is not the end of your journey, but the beginning. It's an invitation to dive deep into the waters of your imagination, to explore the uncharted territories of your narrative landscape, and to trust in the process, the process of creation. The path from Zero Draft to final manuscript is a journey of transformation, both for your story and for you as a writer. Next video in this series will, oh, so I have the sheet that I will uh, make available once this video is up where uh, it goes over word count and organizing all your stuff. It has all, it has like time sheets. Uh, uh, if you have a time, time frame, like a timeline in your story, it, it has, a, has a template for that, it has a template for keeping track of your word count. It's going to be a fun video. It's going to be a fun video. Uh, so. Keep a look. Question. How do you approach the initial stages of drafting your stories? Do you dive straight into writing a zero draft to explore your ideas freely? Or do you start with a more structured outline? Share your strategies and any challenges you encountered, uh, encountered in, the, in the comments below. If you haven't done so already and you're like, all right, I'm in. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. If you didn't know, uh, soon. If not later, I will be starting live videos up again. Uh, probably not by the time you see this video. Uh, my goal, my goal is, what is this, April, May. By June or July, I'd like to be doing live videos again. I'm just uh, finalizing some things. But anyway, uh... <sighs> as always, keep developing the right mindsets. I'll see you next time. Bye.